Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topic today is three possible antichrists. You know, in my 40 years of studying Bible prophecy, I would like to be able to help you that I figured it all out. I can tell you who the antichrist is, but the truth is I don't know. Part of that is we've got several candidates, which we're going to talk about today. Part of that is I think God just hasn't revealed at least to me yet, but we do have some very good candidates, and we're going to talk about those today. And I should also mention that ever since we got kicked off YouTube, donations, yes, have dropped substantially, so if God has blessed you and you could help, now would be a really good time to do so. And I think all you have to do is go down below, and there's a place to donate. Or, of course, you can always go to prophecyclub.com. So anyway, three possible antichrists. The first one I'm going to rule out. I ruled out King Charles of England a long time ago. And yes, I know, got a lot of emails saying, boy, he's a really good candidate. Uh, he is not. I don't think he's even a possibility. For one, he comes from the wrong geographical area. Uh, and I'm not going to take a lot of time proving why he is not. Uh, he's not on the list. He's, he's not the Antichrist. I also have to tell you that the spirit of the Antichrist right now well, at least until we get it confirmed that the first seal has opened, until we get it confirmed that the tribulation has started. And as I've told you, we've got one voice, and yes, I've got your emails, and I appreciate more emails on that, uh, and I am investigating that, and probably tomorrow I'll bring you the answer on, I may have another one or two, and who knows about tomorrow, maybe even three more voices that say that the tribulation has started. But that's a very big statement, and I'm almost, I'm almost going to have to have an angel visit, come into my room and say, yes, it started, for me to say, yes, it started. That's a very big statement, and if I make that statement, I will make that with a lot of good reasoning as to why I say that. Right now, Vicki Parnell is one that I recognize, and she says the angel Gabriel came to her and said that not only the first— but the first five seals have been opened. But we'll talk about that probably tomorrow. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about three possible antichrists. One is a future Muslim that, in my opinion, based upon my studies in Daniel, which are extensive, he'll probably come from Iraq, Turkey, or Syria, and I'll show you why I say that. Second is we've got a couple of people with good reason says that it could be Emmanuel Macron of France. I question that, but we're going to look at it. Third is a future Rus Russian president, not Vladimir Putin, but a future one. And I'll tell you why I say that. Okay, so let's get into it. First of all, future Muslim from Iraq, Turkey, or Syria. I've long thought that, you know, there's, there's two sides. There is the uh, Isaac and there's the Ishmael side. And the Isaac is the blessed side, and the Ishmael side was also very, very blessed. You know, I just told you, I was just down in Saudi Arabia last week. I mean, literally this time last week, I was climbing on Mount Sinai. I only made it about halfway up, which I plan to get to that here in the next few days or so. I've got the PowerPoint put together, and it, that's an awesome talk. But anyway, I have long thought that the Ishmael side is a high probability out of that bloodline, the Antichrist could come. But there's more. Now, I've made a whole DVD called Daniel vs. Buffers, which, by the way, you can watch right now instantly at WatchProphecyClub.com. It's 20 bucks a month or $200 a year, and you have access to like 330 DVDs that we made over a 25-year period. All of them it used to be like $25 for a two and a half, no, $30, $30 for a, Two and a half hour DVD. You can watch all three hundred of them for twenty bucks a month now, and I believe that one's up there. It's called Daniel verse by verse, and I think it's like six hours long. I mean, I covered all of the details. Now, these I've got a few slides from that, and I'm not going to go into this. I'm going to keep this simple. I know a lot of people when I start talking prophecy, the views start going down. I understand your eyes cross, get a headache trying to understand all this prophecy. Uh, that's my job is to make it easy for you to understand. So if you want to take the time to read this slide, you can. But essentially, it's saying that one of the places that the Antichrist could come from, that's what Daniel says, is actually 
uh, the great horn, Alexander the Great, specifically of the Grecian Empire. And this tells you more about Alexander the Great, which I don't have time to go into, but if you want to read it, you can read it. Specifically, the Grecian Empire is one of the areas that Daniel says the Antichrist is going to come from. But that's not the only place. Then this verse says, And there shall stand up three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. It goes on to describe the Antichrist. Okay, so that means the Antichrist got to come from Persia. But another place says he's got to come from the Grecian Empire. Well, if you look at the map, the Grecian Empire and the Persian Empire <laughs> overlap quite a bit. There's more. Then this verse says that he's going to come from the Iron Empire. We know that that's the Roman Empire. Well, if you look at this map <laughs> and this map, and, and this map, they overlap a lot. But since he's got to come from the Grecian Empire, and he's got to come from the Persian Empire, and he's got to come from the Roman Empire, all we have to do is decide, okay, which of those three empires overlap? And the answer is this area, specifically this area. So if I've understood Daniel correctly, the Antichrist, must come from this geographical region. Now, that may not be telling us a whole lot because people move around a whole lot. So let's go on to the next one. Two different people, I believe it is, that say Emmanuel Macron of France is a high probability to be the Antichrist or the Beast. Now, let me give a disclaimer. I'm not saying that he is. I do not know. As a matter of fact, God has not told me he's the Antichrist at all. I'm simply bringing to you the best information I have up to this point. And tomorrow, if I get more information, I'll bring you that information. I want to give you the very best information I possibly can. So, first of all, Daniel 11.37 says that the Antichrist will not have the desire for women. Remember that now. Jason Meeks 5.3.2022 had a dream. This is the summarized version. He says, I have a view from above the most beautiful yacht I've ever seen, sitting on a wide river in France. The bottom and sides are mahogany, the top is glass. Anyone inside has a 360-degree view. I zoom into the yacht. Emmanuel Crone is shown, uh, showing a young man some paintings on the yacht wall. Two other high school boys were sitting at another table. McCrone was wooing them like a man woos a girl on a date. Then I heard a voice say, This man has no interest in women. The dream cuts to a research facility hidden in the French Alps. No roads leading to it. Scientists were researching how to mix humans with robots. Not like the Terminator movies with robot inside skin and the outside. This was a much more advanced. I was shown inside their skull. It was very, it was truly part human and part machine. The part, brain was human, but other pieces were wire, some parts steel, part of bone and part of blood vessels. Other parts were human inside, were human muscle overlapping steel parts. All the parts were melded together in a fashion that made it almost impossible to tell where human ended and machine began. Then the words said again, he is trying to make the image of the beast. Now, again, I've given you a disclaimer, so I'm going to keep moving. A year before the French election, Macron had no political party and no previous electoral experience. Then won a landslide victory over the preferred candidate. I'll even say the two candidates. That would be like someone rising up that was not either Democrat or Republican and winning by a landslide in America. That's what he did in France. At the age of 39, he was the youngest president of France they've ever had, taking 351 out of 577 seats. Now remember, uh, the Bible says that this man, the Antichrist, his number will be 603 score and 6, or 666. There are 36, or 6 times 6, total characters in Macron's name. 32 letters, one dash, three spaces. If you give each char character a value of its position and calculate the sum, you get 666. 1, 2, 3 plus 36 equals 666. Now, I think that's a little stretching, but nevertheless, that is a fact. He won the election with 66.06% of the votes. Second Thessalonians says that he poses and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped so that he as God, set it in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Macron has said he will, quote, rule like the Roman god Jupiter, in homage to the highest pagan god of the Roman and Greek Pathions. 
the king of all the gods in ancient Roman religions, in open reference to this, Macron's nickname is Jupiter. Other names given to him include Jesus Macron, Europe's savior, and the new Louis the Sixth, I believe that is, or the Sun King Reborn. Daniel 9.26 says that the people of the prince shall come. In other words, Daniel's saying they refer to him as a prince. Unlike most European and Western leaders, Macron is technically a prince. Macron became a co-prince of Andorra, a small principality located between France and Spain, at the same time he assumed office. The remaining royalty in Western and Northern Europe have little or no power and are essentially just figureheads, but this royal has rocketed to power since he also holds the highest executive office in the country. Because of his party's sweeping of legislative elections, some are calling him, now listen, a monarch who can rule by decree. In other words, not by populace of the people. Basically, he's a king. Whom he would, he slew. Whom he would, he kept alive, like Nebuchadnezzar. Now the end begins, says, French President Emmanuel Macron, who has already declared his desire to lead the new world order. Hmm. Then we come along to Chris Reed, 5-13-2022. The angel Gabriel visits him. He says, as Jesus never directly said, I'm the Christ, the Son of God, but expected us to come up to that conclusion by what he said and did. Likewise, this angel did not directly say Emmanuel Macron will become the Antichrist once he's released from falling in the bottomless pit, but expected us to come to that conclusion by what was said. So Chris Reed said, the angel came into his room. He said, two children of the Cold War will be removed and taken out of power. You know, I can't say their names, okay? He said, JB will be taken out of power, and so will VP. Pretty soon, and both will happen fairly close together. When this happens, KH will become the VP, but she will struggle with this, in person and even more behind the scenes with her inadequacies. E.W., this is the senator from Massachusetts, will emerge to become a major player in J.B.'s void. The globalist New World Order system is looking for the opportunity in the current climate, while there is crisis after crisis, trying to bring in a New World Order. France wants another Napoleon. Spain wants another Queen. Greece wants another Alexander the Great. And Rome wants another Caesar. I remember... A few years ago, when Leslie and I, on a vacation, briefly stayed overnight as we passed through Italy. And I remember at the hotel, they had busts along the hotel wall as you walked to your room, where they were lifting up their various Alexander the Greats, their, their, their kings. And to Italy, it's really, really big that they have this. And so I, I thought of this prophecy when this was said. I thought it makes perfect sense. Then Terry Bennett comes along in 2010 and says, the angel Gabriel visited him too, he said. Then there will arise a new government in Europe, which Gabriel warned me, keep your eyes on four nations. They are signposts to what is coming. Keep your eyes on Greece. That's what we just talked about. Italy, Spain, and France. Greece is going to one another, Alexander the Great. No, he is not quoting what Chris Reed said. They both say the angel Gabriel came to them, and they both say these same sentences. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. Now, you might not like it, might not agree with it, but when two people say the angel, same angel Gabriel came to them and said basically the same long sentence, that's credible. So he said, Greece is going to one another, Alexander the Great. Italy is going to one another emperor. Spain is going to one another king and queen. France is going to one another Napoleon. Satan is going to offer all three of them in one person. And they will say yes. Through chaos, they will gain control. Now, you're probably thinking, now what that other guy said? Well, let's back up. Let's look at it. Okay. So Chris Reed said, France wants another Napoleon. Spain wants another queen. Greece wants another Alexander the Great. And Rome wants another Caesar. Now, that's Chris Reed. Now, Terry Bennett says, 
Greece wants another Alexander the Great. Same phrase. Italy is going to want another emperor. Spain is going to want another king and queen. France is going to want another Napoleon. And Satan is going to offer all three of them in one person of the Antichrist. Almost exactly the same words. Let's go on. And so the enemy is exploiting crisis climate in our world. And he wants to present the solution to the world as the world cries out for peace and safety. He went on to say that Paris, France will become a hotbed of turbulence in the future. And by the way, it has. And that the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, will gain more public notoriety and news coverage and will emerge with more worldwide recognition for his purpose to introduce false peace to Europe. I'm not saying this angel said Emmanuel Macron is the beast or the Antichrist, but he did say keep your eye on him and watch him. So, as watchmen, we will watch him. The angel said look up his birthday and left. So I looked up his birthday, it's December 21st, which just happens to be the winter solstice, which just happens to be the birthday of every pagan god in Babylon. That's Zeus' birthday, Tammuz, Baal's, Jupiter's birthday. The ancient pagans believe on the shortest day of the year, December 21st, when the sun god is weakest, the son of Baal would be reborn. In other words, the son of Baal, the Antichrist. They believed after December 21st, the sun got stronger because the days got longer. Hmm. The verse came to me, He, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Second Thessalonians said, Who opposeth exalteth himself above all that is called God, or is a worship. Okay, you got it. His name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. So keep your eyes on Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Jean Michael Frederick Macron, Hebrew meetings. Emmanuel means God with us. John means God is merciful. Michael means who is like God. The non-Hebrew Frederick means peaceful ruler. Macron means printed mark. Now, again, we're not saying Emmanuel Macron is the Antichrist or the beast, but we're certainly keeping our eyes on him. J-M-F-M equals 666. Can someone confirm that? If he is the Antichrist, 666 must be in his name somewhere, somehow, or it changed his name. Who knows? Macron means a printed mark. Definition of Macron is a mark. Hmm. Circumstance or Antichrist near. El Elyon means the highest God. The richest man alive is putting up the Starlink satellite system to link to the QFS global digital financial system, and is said to be the one who will present the mark. No, this is not talking about Emmanuel Macron. This is talking about, probably shouldn't say his name. Mark to, mark to the world who just purchased Twitter, or is trying to purchase Twitter, a global communication network. Just not exactly an accident. So Emmanuel means God with us. Macron means Mark. Hmm is one of the ten horns that crowns the year. Born on December 21st, the day, the shortest day of the year, when the sun god is weakest, the son of Baal would be reborn. Now let's jump to Terry Bennett. This is brand new. If you look at this date, this was this past weekend. 10, 23, 22. This, and I plan to bring more of this to you tomorrow, so don't miss tomorrow's program. Right now I'm putting it all together. It takes a lot of work to put this together. This is what he said this particular Sunday morning. He said, French President Emmanuel Macron, who I believe at least is an Antichrist figure, I believe it's stronger than that. I was shown his face in 2001 by Gabriel. And there's the link to it. Let's talk about Joseph Kitchen. I actually cooked this loaf of bread you're seeing here. It takes me about 10 minutes to put the ingredients together, put it into a bread machine, push a button, two hours, 20 minutes later, I get a loaf of bread out like that. Now, if you cut that loaf of bread that weighs about three pounds, the loaves you get in the store have most of the good stuff removed. The loaves you get in the store are about a pound. That's three pounds because it's got the good stuff still in it. Cut that into 14 slices. And if I eat a slice in the morning and the afternoon, I'm satisfied. So on that basis, one loaf can sustain, I didn't say it's everything we want, can sustain a person, one person, for a week. Based upon that, it'll get you excellent nutrition. It tastes good, long storage life, 
10 minutes to combine the ingredients, 2 hours, 20 minutes to make it. Other wheat that you order arrives in paper bags, which means bugs, rice, humidity can get a hold of it and ruin it. But at Joseph Kitchen, they send it out in 100 mil thick buckets. Gives you long shelf life. It's stackable. The nitrogen infuses that hopefully gives it a lot much longer shelf life, kills bugs and things like that. Easily resealable. Keep in a comet controlled area. And they have it in stock. This is a picture, an actual picture of part of the warehouse. Here's another picture of the, these. Actually, each one of those boxes holds 2,500 pounds of wheat. And I think they've got 54 of those boxes, a bunch of them. So Joseph's Kitchen can ship it to you right now. You go to most of these places, they say out of stock. So here's what you want to do. Everybody needs to get a machine package. These are the things that you need to grind the wheat berries. Put them into a grinder. 30 seconds later, you have flour. You put that into the bread machine along with six other ingredients. Push about two hours, 20 minutes later, you have a nice hot loaf of whole wheat bread. Then you have to decide how much food you want. You want food two people one year, four people one year, six people one year. And if you want to make certain you have it when the electricity goes down, you can also get yourself a solar generator all at josephskitchen.com. Joseph's Kitchen. Now let's go to the, to the third one, a future Russian president. Remember, Dmitry Dudeman said that there was, actually was told by the angel Gabriel, the fall of America will start with an internal revolution in America, started by the communists. Some of the people will start fighting against the government. The government will be busy with the internal problems, then from the oceans, Russia, Cuba, Nicaragua, Central America, Mexico, and two other countries will attack and defeat America in one day and one hour, so great riches will come to naught. God will raise up China, Japan, and many of the nations. They'll go against the Russians. They'll defeat the Russians. They'll back them to the gates of Paris where they sign a peace treaty. Here it is, here it is, here it is. But they make the Russians their leader. Notice it does not say France or Greece or Italy or Germany leads the world. Who is it that leads the world? The one that defeated America. The Russians. So they make the Russians their leader. Now, does that make sense that it would be a Russian antichrist? Not according to Daniel, not according to my understanding, but at the same time, you can't throw it away. So if you can't throw it away, you got to say, okay, it's possible to have a Russian antichrist. I, 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 I've never seen it that way until just recently, but again, you can't throw it away. Then it goes on to say, they will make a peace treaty, but they make the Russians their leader. With the Russians as the leader, all the world goes down to attack little Israel. Israel can't count on the help of the Jews in America, so she cries for Messiah. Jesus returns in the clouds and defeats them. So what the point is, the Russians are there at Armageddon. Remember Ezekiel 38 and 39? I've run out of time here, but if you go to it, it's talking about how the Russians are there at Armageddon, and the primary ones coming down to attack Israel. So the point is, there could be a Russian Antichrist. Okay, Terry Saka, CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. Why should people be calling Cornerstone today? I was actually watching an interview with a very powerful psychoanalyst, and he brought up Dmitry Dudeman, and I was very impressed. I was like, Dmitry Dudeman, that's Stan's, one of Stan's main guy in prophecy. He was talking about cycles of market crashes and, and financial uh, realignments. In the next 45 days, we are looking at such a severe possibility of a 40 to 50% market correction by design, and that will lead to an extraordinary opportunity to take advantage of gold and silver while it's at these low prices. All right, so in your opinion, is it better that they get gold or silver? Silver is very undervalued. Uh, the banks have to get out of the short position, so I think they're going to take it to this low as it is now, and that would be your best opportunity for return on investment and definitely the easiest to unload when the time comes. Okay, so how does it work? They go to cornerstoneassetmetals.com, and essentially, eventually, they're going to make a phone call, and they're going to set up an account, and then the money trades hands. How does that work? Yeah, so they either register on our website or they give us a call. We'll walk them through their options. Once we have cleared uh, monies into the account, we can actually get the, the product in line for shipment, depending on what you order. 
It could take anywhere from seven days to you know, six weeks, depending on what it is. Uh, but once you actually lock in that order, it is owned and it will eventually be there. Now, what if they want to buy a whole bunch of it, but they don't have a place that they really want to store it? Can you store it for them? Oh, that's a big one. We have a lot of clients that they go upwards to seven figures. And it's obviously better to have, you know, 40,000 ounces in a private depository than it is at home. And so we find a lot of people do store in a private depository de depository. It's independent, so it's not related to any part of the banking system. Uh, but the important part is when it's there, you can buy and sell it very easy. And because Cornerstone also has an affiliated account at that depository, we can literally transfer the assets right into our account and wire funds to you fairly quick. Okay, so it's not actually physically held in Switzerland, is it? I would never be holding anything in Switzerland. I think that's the epicenter of Satanism, right? <laughs> Okay, so it's Terry Saka at cornerstoneassetmetals.com, cornerstoneassetmetals.com. Go there, check it out today. Also, I want to recommend you get my Watchman package. I haven't talked about this in a while, but I got them right here. In this Watchman's package, you get two of these two foot by three foot big charts. Okay, that's one chart. Let me show you the other chart here. And here's the other chart. So these great big charts, two foot by three foot charts, and they are uh, they're vinyl. They are very nice. Put them up on the wall, two foot by three foot, and I've got them right here. Of course, it's just eight and a half by fourteen charts, so I can refer to them. But if I had a wall a little closer to me, I'd put these up here. Also, you get my handwritten book of revelation this is where i hand wrote out the book of revelation all the way through it all of the scriptures and i memorized it now all of this this has all of my notes in it here let me pick a page that has some notes if you see out in the margin there it has notes what i think these scriptures are talking about and then last year i did a school of the watchman and it's like 18 hours, I think it was. It's on five DVDs. We're putting all that together with uh, five copies of my very powerful book, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy. It's valued at $355 for a gift of $200. You get both charts. You get the five discs. You get my book and my book. <laughs> my book and my book. All for a gift of $200. A very, very good deal. Also, I recommend you go to prophecyclub.com and get all five of my books. And I didn't write this one, but I did organize it. And you get one set of each of them, which is actually 40 books for a gift of $100 at prophecyclub.com.